Breaking news here on ABC News Live. We're following reports of this blast in Beirut. The IDF saying it targeted a senior Hezbollah commander after a rocker, rocket was fired by the militant group, killing multiple children in the northern Golan Heights. The IDF says the commander was responsible for the murder of those children. For more, we want to bring in our Marcus Bohr in Beirut, Lebanon. He joins us by phone. Uh, Marcus, we know this is breaking, and, and we're just getting details by the minute. What do you know at this point? Yeah, uh, Kara, this is uh, certainly coming in very quickly, the information and also the pictures that we have seen from local media showing really a chaotic scene in the Dahia district of southern Beirut. This is a uh, southern Beirut, a uh, southern uh, suburb of the city there, and it's also the Hezbollah stronghold. And we have seen pictures of buildings that have been badly damaged and people running around, just absolute chaos there. The word that we have tonight is that Israel has apparently carried out a, a strike, a targeted strike on a person who they say was behind that strike on a soccer field over the weekend that you just mentioned. And the events that we're watching unfold here tonight is something that people have been waiting now, waiting on for the past 48 hours. And Kira, I can tell you that the, the mood here in Beirut and across the region has been very tense. Everyone waiting to see exactly how Israel would respond. As you know, they said that they would respond in such a way that they uh, haven't before uh, in the midst of this conflict. And, Kira, the concern now, as we look at these pictures coming in and we receive the information coming out of that scene, is what this will mean moving forward. Hezbollah has said that any strike on the Dahia district or the airport here in Beirut or any other critical infrastructure in the Beirut area and in Lebanon will be met with a strong response. And, Kira, that is why there is so much concern that this situation could spill even further out of control and turn into a much wider regional war. Hezbollah right now is saying that it firmly denies it was behind this strike. That's right. Um, very soon after the strike on that, that soccer field this weekend, Hezbollah came out very quickly and said they had absolutely nothing to do with it. In fact, they said that it was the, a rocket or a missile from Israel's uh, Iron uh, Dome, uh, air defense system. Uh, Israel has said that, no, they have evidence that proves that this was indeed a rocket that was fired from Hezbollah territory and that they are the group that was responsible for this. And, and that's the reason why we've seen this, uh, this strike, uh, what's been reported to be a strike uh, here tonight. And, Kira, it's important to point out that Israel has said that they would carry out a uh, precise or a limited strike is what we have heard. And that's what we have seen so far. Uh, all the indications right now is that the only explosions or blasts that we have uh, received reports on have been here in the Sahia area. And uh, again, that the airport uh, has not been targeted and also any other critical infrastructure um, has not been hit. And that's critical because, as you know, the U.S. and several other countries have been uh, urging these sides in the midst of this conflict to exercise restraint. And we even heard a U.S. official, uh, I believe it was um, the Secretary of State, who said that the, the strike that occurred at that soccer field over the weekend, uh, in his words, did not warrant um, an escalation. And uh, that Israel uh, does have the right to defend itself and to respond to what happened over the weekend. But the U.S. Uh, does not want to see this uh, get even worse. But, but Kira... I don't have to tell you. I mean, you know from experience that uh, this is a situation that could very quickly spill out of control. Uh, one mis miscalculation could lead to another, and then we have a much wider uh, a war here. And that's what so many people are trying to avoid. And as I tell you that, for the past 10 months, people who live in southern Lebanon, uh, more than 100,000 of them have been forced from their homes. And when we talk about an all-out war, there has already been an all-out war unfolding along the southern border of Lebanon and the northern uh, border of, of Israel. And that's something that people have been living through uh, every single day uh, since October 7th. And even here in, in Beirut, the concern is uh, for those people to be able to, go, be able to go back to their homes and for there to be some peace and stability across the region here as we continue to watch these pictures come in and new information trickle in about what appears to be a promised uh, reprisal attack 
uh, in Lebanon on the part of Israel uh, for that strike and that soccer field over the weekend. Stay with us, uh, Marcus. Matt Rivers has joined us now out of Tel Aviv. Uh, and as we just pointed out, Matt, the concern of an all out war just enveloping the region is what everybody's talking about now. Uh, where do we go from here? What happens next? Yeah, well, essentially the ball, according to Israel, is in Hezbollah's court. Uh, this was their response to that attack that we saw firsthand up in the Golan Heights that happened on Saturday night. We've heard since then Israeli officials promising something that was going to be severe. And from what it looks like, this has been a severe attack on the part of Israel. The images that are coming in that you just heard Marcus describe there uh, show the better part of a building totally leveled uh, in this attack that is going uh, that was going after, according to Israel, a senior Hezbollah commander that was responsible uh, for launching or at least in charge of the people who launched the missile, according to the IDF, uh, that killed those 12 children on the soccer field. So this has been a substantial response. We have to wait to see what the casualties are. We also have to wait to see if Israel is going to do anything else. For now, it seems that this was a targeted attack, and it doesn't appear that there's going to be lots of other things that Israel is doing in direct response to what we saw in the Golan Heights. But we do have to wait and see how this plays out over uh, the coming hours. The big question here here going into all this is how Israel was going to respond. Would they target uh, Hezbollah senior leadership? Would they target civilian infrastructure? Would it be a combination of both? Would it last several days or be one strike? This is clearly a part of the response, but exactly where it goes from here, I don't think we know yet. And I'll just add very quickly here that where this goes from here, if, and it's a big if, this is Israel's uh, part. This is Israel's targeted attack, and it's not going to be uh, further than that. This is Israel's response. Then now it's in Hezbollah's court. How do they respond? And this is the dangerous game that both sides are playing. It's the tit for tat that where does it lead to? Uh, that's the open question at this point. This is still very early uh, moments uh, in all of this, and it's a very tense time both here in Israel, where I am, and also where Marcus is in Beirut. Yeah, I mean, where it leads to is is more death and destruction and and more war and more concern about this uh, enveloping the the entire region. So so Matt, do we know anything about this um, senior commander? I've been trying to find more information. All I can see here is that uh, where this target or where this explosion uh, happened, the area that was targeted uh, was a densely populated area. Uh, it was a Hezbollah stronghold, but it looked like there was a specific uh, building uh, that this this uh, that was hit um, in particular where this senior commander was. Do, do we know any names who this could be? Can you give us any idea just about the chain of command? Well, there's a lot of chatter online about who this particular individual is. ABC News is currently trying, as we speak, to confirm the name uh, of this individual. Some Israeli outlets are reporting uh, a name of a commander. We're not there yet. We're trying to make sure that we uh, dot all our I's and cross all our T's before we release a name of a commander that was killed here. But what is clear is that this is a very senior figure in Hezbollah leadership. The other thing we need to confirm uh, is that the IDF only said that they were targeting the senior commander behind that attack. They have not said whether he was killed or not in this attack. So that's the other big thing that we're waiting to confirm at this point. Uh, and, and this is what happens in these kind of breaking news situations. As you know, Kira, this is the trickle of information. And what we are trying to figure out is the same thing as what everybody else in the region is trying to figure out. How big of a deal is this? Because that is going to be the answer to the question of, well, where do we go from here? Does it escalate? Does it turn into a wider regional war? That has been the chief concern for all parties involved in this. So we're obviously staying on this story as we speak. We're going to get more information as each minute goes by, essentially, to figure out exactly what's happening here and what the implications are behind it.